Hi, in this video I'm going to explain you how a Java class should look like. We are going to code together a class almost from scratch, a customer class, in order to identify all that mistakes that could be found sometimes in the industry by following best practices and sometimes I'll give you my tips or my recommendations according to my criteria. The first thing that we have here is a project, a Java project called e-commerce, which I made it up from scratch, and there's nothing special uh, about it. We are using Gradle as the building automation tool. I'm going to open the build Gradle file, and as you can see, there's nothing much to explain. We have here some configurations, test implementation, which means that these dependencies are just going to impact us in case that we are developing some test classes, which is not the purpose of this video. So I'm closing this file and we are going to the source. I open the source package, the main, the Java, and we have the main class, which it has its main method in order to be invoked by the virtual vision machine and just that. Now, we are going to develop our customer class, right? So a good practice is to make new, and a new package, which I'm going to call it domain, okay? This is important because all the classes, simple classes that will represent our business entities, I advise you to put them all in domain package. So now I'm going to make new and Java class and here customer. Now that we have the customer class, it's time to come up with all those fields that are of our interest. So we will begin with, for instance, int customer ID. Then we could make string first name, string second name. If this customer is active, is active, and local date for registration, registration date. So now that we have these fields, these fields are accessible from the outside and that's bad because we are violating the good practice of encapsulation, which means that this in customer always or almost always should be private. And I'm going to correct the others. Another example that I consider that is bad practice is having fields that are not in English. If you are an English native, you don't have this problem. But in my case, that my mother tongue is Spanish, perhaps I could write here is activo. And this is bad. Why? Because in case that your application or your company will become international, there would be people that will find this es activo and you will force them to translate this es activo and that's really bad. So I always suggest that fields will be always descriptive and in English. So is active is more than okay. Once we have these fields done, you should go to the constructor. In my opinion, I know that Java provides you a default constructor that if it's not written there, so it will provide you for free, let's say. However, my point of view is that try always to put this like public customer parentheses and with no arcs. Why? Because now we are in a simple project that it's not even in spring, but there is no JPA as well. However, once you are using frameworks, it's a good practice to have this non-argument constructor. Because let's say that now you have um, public customer and we are going to pass in an int customer ID for whatever reason and you do this, but that customer ID, customer ID. If you don't have this customer 
non-argument constructor, you will encounter issues because some reflection occurs on JPA and in Spring and most of these libraries or code needs the default non-constructor argument. So if you don't have this, Java will just have this constructor and issues will occur. <laughs> Trust me that this is really an issue and it's hard to detect. I'm going to delete this one as, the, as for now it's not needed. Okay, once we are done with the constructors, we need to access this information and set this information if that's what is required in the application. So we need getters and setters. I'm going to develop just one setter and one getter and then the others we are going to use the IDE to simplify the, pro the process. So I start with public and what are we going to retrieve with customer ID. So we need the, an int. So public int get customer ID and we are going to retrieve what customer ID. Ret return customer ID. And for the setter, the same public void because we are not retrieving back any information set customer ID parenthesis int we are passing in an argument so customer ID curly braces and we do this customer ID equals set sorry customer ID and with this we are more than done about the order and this is my own preference. I like having first the fields, constructors, and then getter and setter. So we are going to use the, the IDE to simplify the getters and setters that are still missing. So there is generate, and I'm going to use getter and setter, and we are going to select the missing fields and press OK. And we have all of them done. Once you are done with the getters and setters, I will always advise to take a rapid look about what the ID has produced. So for instance, this set active boolean active active ha has made me realize that I made a mistake before, according to what I consider good practice. So the name is not correct, it's active. So it should go as active, and now I'm going to the getters and setters for the active and this get active, I always like to have this as is active because it is more semantic, is active and that question is replied back with yes and no. So we are going to fix this active and this is going to be this that active equals active. And a final advice. Uh, I used for this field, re the registration date, a uh, local date type. I know that there's still code there that uses the legacy Java util date or Java SQL date. Uh, if you are using, I think, Java 8 or be below Java 8, you have to use the date that comes in Java util. Uh, in my opinion, avoid that. Uh, I prefer local date because it provides a clear and easier API to manipulate dates, which is a thing, manipulating dates, that is not trivial in any programming language. So this will ease your steps while manipulating this local date. So go for it. At this point, I think that we are more than okay with this class. Perhaps you are wondering, hey, but you have not overridden the equals and hash code. I have seen sometimes that people override these methods that are inherited from the object class. Yes, you are right. However, I would like to make a special video to cover this because there are a lot of subtle details that I like to discuss and this is not the appropriate time to do that. We have arrived to the end of the video. Give me a thumbs up in case you've learned something. Subscribe to the channel in case you've not already done it because this helps me a lot to grow the channel and encourage me to continue making videos. And in case you have any doubts, just put them on the comments below. See you until the next video.